My name is Aaron. You know, Moses' brother. The guy who was asked to speak for him to Pharaoh because Moses has a stutter. That was seven plagues ago. Since then, Egypt's gone through blood, frogs, wild animals, cattle disease, boils and hail. Now God tells us again, come, come to Pharaoh. Moses and I, we go to Pharaoh and tell him that if he doesn't let the Israelites go and worship God, a plague of locusts will come and eat away all the trees and crops in Egypt. Pharaoh says he'll let the Israelites go and worship, but only the men, not the women or children or cows. But this isn't good enough. It has to be all of us, and we need the cows to sacrifice. So sure enough, the locusts come and cover up the whole land in a thick, black, cloudy swarm. Predictably, Pharaoh pleads for mercy, and God sends a change in the wind and hurls the locusts into the sea. No sooner have the locusts gone, but Pharaoh's heart is hardened again, and he says he will not let the Israelites go. So this time, Moses holds out his arm towards the sky, and God sends a total darkness over the land of Egypt, lasting for three days non-stop. Now Pharaoh can't take much more of this. He promises Moses that the Israelites can go and worship God, women and children too. Only the cows need to stay behind. Still, Moses stands up tall and tells me to say to Pharaoh, not only must you provide us with Egyptian cattle for our sacrifices, but our own cows are coming too, because we won't know what we're going to sacrifice until we get there. And again, Pharaoh gets angry and his heart gets hard. He screams at Moses to get out. Make sure you never see me again, because the next time you see my face, you shall die. And Moses, like some icy cool cowboy, knowing the final plague, the killing of the Egyptian firstborn, and the moment of our freedom are just around the corner, feeds me this line to tell Pharaoh. You're right. I will never see your face again. Moses seems to have changed a lot since God first told him to tell the Israelites they were going to leave Egypt. He seemed scared then and came up with all kinds of excuses like his stutter and the possibility that the people wouldn't listen to him. And now he's getting smart with Pharaoh, the most powerful person in the whole of Egypt? Truth is, we're still both afraid. We're just better at doing what we have to do anyway. And that's why God has kept saying to us, come, Come to Pharaoh. Come, not leave or go, which is after all what we're about to do. Go and leave Egypt. Pharaoh is at the top of the heap of everything that's bad about Egypt. The slavery and the cruelty, the inequality and the oppression. In his system, he's worshipped like a god. So I don't think it's surprising we feel scared when we have to enter his palace. When God says to Moses and me, come to Pharaoh, not only is he saying, you need to come up close to stand up to Pharaoh. He's also calling to us from right inside that place. He's saying, if you're afraid, don't worry, because I'm here with you too. It makes me realize Pharaoh is not a god, and he's not a monster either. He's just a human being who forgot what it means to be a human being. It's like God is calling to us from Pharaoh's divine core, his human essence, where the capacity to do good or evil comes from. God is already there. That's also why as we leave Egypt, or wherever we go actually, it's like coming home.